grand rising. These are the times that your pastors and priests have tried to shield you from this whole time. This is why you have very little understanding to what you are hearing, because it goes totally against the narrative that you have been taught. Now, we know when we're coming to the time where we're actually going to have the opportunity to actually communicate and give reverence and acknowledge our ancestors. And like always, the churches have hijacked the real reason for this time. There are many um, sayings and beliefs and thoughts and things that have been communicated and expressed by Yahweh Shai that is not necessarily in your Bible. Bible is like gives you the basic instructions before leaving the earth, but other books will give you a more in-depth understanding of what he was talking about. Now, man will talk about this time of the year, and you know, before it was like they try to get us all into their churches to be praying at this time, and but if, but everything they said that they supposed well pagans were doing before was evil. But all they did was try to take our practices, repackage them with new names, and have us go to their churches on our ley lines in order for them to steal our prayers. And nothing has changed today, except now that. They know so many people have awakened. Now they try to make it sound like these times are the times of the devil and times of evil. But they're actually an a, a very a great opportunity for you to actually communicate and get in touch and actually give reverence and um, acknowledge your ancestors and the things that they've done. Now check this out. Because they try to make it sound like all these things right now are all evil. Anything that they say that doesn't go with the church is evil. But they know that there's power in these times. Check this out. So how was I talking? All nature is subservient, okay, to the will of man and evil men, as well as good, have all the powers of mind and may control the elements. Now they know that that's what, this is why they've set up these churches on our ley lines. When they came into our lands, they didn't set up brand new churches. They just pretty much just took over our buildings, took over on our areas because they knew we were built on powerful power centers, and then they you know, made us go and reverence their God. That's why they had All Saints Day. It's pretty much, when you're praying to All Saints, you're praying to the dead. They talked about how that's evil, but that's exactly what they did. So again, all nature is subservient to the will of man. And evil men, as well as good, have all the powers of mind and may control the elements. The head gives not the proof of true messiahship. For man, by means of intellect, can never know of God, nor bring himself to walk in light. Messiah lives not in the head, but in the heart, the seat of mercy and love. Messiah never works for selfish gains. He stands above the carnal self. His words and deeds are for the universal good. Now, see, Catholic means universal, but their church is not for the universal good. Their church has been for themselves. It says, Messiah never tries to be a king to wear a crown and sit upon the earthly throne. Okay, the king is earthly. All right. So the churches are well aware of these and the importance of these times. That's why they moved their All Saints Day from May until November 1st. Research it for yourself. If, if these times are supposedly evil and times of the devil and whatever else, then why would they set up their holiday on exactly the same day that we probably were doing our things? You said this wasn't anything new to them. They just barely got this information and this understanding, and they're trying to steal our prayers as they do today. This is the best time, to, this tonight, tomorrow night, for you to get in touch with your ancestors, to spend time giving them reverence. They, remember, they always talk about how the DNA of their, their past traumas is passed down to us. That's something that we need to talk about. That is something that we need to deal with. Now, I'm sure the good, the bad traits as well as the good traits are also you know, passed down to us. So the fact that they've been trying to make sure that we don't do any of these types of things, there's a reason for that because the power lies within our people. We are the ones that the most high listens to. We are the ones that the prayers of the most high. Okay. He, we, our prayers are listened to by the most high. The angels take our prayers up to the most high. And for a time, the most high had turned his face away from us, but now he's turned it back to us. This is why you see here about this expiration date of the Balfour lease. And then this goes for all the lands. You guys are on lands that you don't belong to. And now the Most High is talking about how he's going to make everyone go back to their lands. That's what's on the ducket right now. So you see how they changed All Saints Day in order to get our, our prayers right? This is for all the people who believe in Paul. 
You're talking about Saint Thecla. Where does Saint Thecla come from? You guys don't even realize that Paul and Thecla were together. They were doing things together. See, this is what happens when they try to be both sides. They want to be Thecla. They want Thecla to be white. They want Paul to be white. They want, you know, white people supposedly, you know, uh, going after other white people. But we know, look in society. Who have they gone after? Have they been going after other white people, supposedly? Have they been terrorizing other white people, supposedly? No. They've been terrorizing a certain group of people, and it's been like this the entire time. Look up Thecla. Look, it's in the Lost Scriptures book. Look up her story. We've done videos on this already. But see, they know there's power in praying to our ancestors. So they just give our ancestors new names. They give them new depictions. They get us in, these, uh, in their churches, and they get us praying for them. They tell you about these things in movies, like this one from Lord of the Rings, how there was a covenant already made between the king here and these entities that had died. It is not like all of a sudden they died and all of a sudden the covenants were all, all broken. You know, the, 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 the connections were all broken. That's not the case. OK, they tell you those kinds of things in movie. And the movie's right here. And he's talking about, oh, you know, the line has been broken. So, you know, we, we're just stuck here. But what do they tell you in the movie? Talks about how um, the guy's like, the line has been broken. Well, the line has been remade. That's what he talks about. This line has been remade. And what did he say? That sword, okay, was put back together, right? And it was given to him. Well, if, if, uh, one of the brothers here actually talked about how um, the word sword, just take away the S and it means word. The word was broken. There was a famine of the word for a time. The Gentiles had their opportunity to bring that famine of the word by destroying the Israelites. But the sword has been remade. The word has been brought back together. Now, just think about that. It's like in the movie, the sword was all broken and busted up. And at the end, the sword or the word was brought back to the people. The understanding has not been brought back to the people. The Holy Spirit was bringing all things back into remembrance. She was connecting everything back together. This is our time to be restored again. Isaiah 14, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The churches never wanted you to realize that you had to cleave to the Israelites, not to their churches. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the houses of Israel shall possess them and the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage. Okay, wherein thou was made to serve. That is what you are seeing right now. And someone said, oh, oh none of this is, is fulfilling revelation. Yes, it is. You just don't have the correct understanding. Revelation 6 and 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth be say, come and see. And I look, I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part of the earth is are the Americas, where you guys were not allowed to come to. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, okay, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth, your dogs, your horses, all, you know, everything, your sword, hunger, everything. These are very important times. This is a huge um, opportunity for us to connect with our power, most and first and foremost, the Holy Spirit and our ancestors. Our angels are here to protect us. Our angels are here to help us and to aid us. Our ancestors are here. You know, they are. we are the manifestation of the prayers of our ancestors. So I'm thanking my ancestors today. I'm thanking them for their prayers because their prayers and their, um, their struggles and the things that they had to go through have made it possible for me to be here today, have made it possible for me to be called to do what I do today. And I thank you and I honor you on this day. And I thank you, Most High, for giving me this information and this understanding. I thank you for using me to call Israelites, 
Gentiles, anyone who wants to cleave to the Most High and his people. This is a, an absolutely a wonderful time in order to be alive and understanding, have understanding at this time. And I thank you so much for this opportunity. And I love you so much. And I thank you, family, for being here and for working with me and for um, supporting me through my trials and tribulations and my rise because we all rise now.